And we are live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Jason Hebar Live. And we have another missing persons interview for you. If you are not familiar with the show, what we do here on Jason Hebert Live is interview the loved ones of missing persons in an attempt to help spread awareness and get the story out there and hopefully help bring them home. Uh, sometimes it's missing persons, I should say, or sometimes it's just unsolved crimes that are looking for a culprit or something along those lines. But we desperately help try to help these families get some answers that they're looking for. Sometimes it's a case that just happened uh, within the week, or sometimes it's a case that's been there for decades. You never quite know. But as you can see, our show is interactive. We do have a chat where you can ask questions to our live guest, which is always either a family member or sometimes a friend of the uh, victim of the crime, excuse me, or the alleged crime, I should say. So maybe you've had a question for years that you have been wanting to ask, or maybe since it's a new case, you don't know anything about it and you're trying to find out info, but either way, you are able to ask questions and get the answer directly from the horse's mouth versus watching some shows just kind of are people that, you know, give you their opinion of what they've read kind of thing. I try not to do that. I try to just shut up and get out of the way and, and let our guests speak and tell you guys the story and then let you guys ask the questions. And uh, that, that's kind of how our show goes. It's a very relaxed environment. Uh, I don't rapid fire questions at the guests or anything like that. We just keep it low key, let them tell their story and try to help them as best we can. And the main goal is just to get the word out there to help spread awareness. If you'd like to support the show, you will see the link on screen there and it is in the description, the link to support it. Just click show more and you can support us that way. We do always appreciate you guys. Anyone who supports the show, we will give you a shout out at the end. And that is how we keep the show going. So thank you so much to anyone who has supported and who does support in the future by clicking the link in the description. Um, that's basically it. We're at about 40 people. I'd like to let a few more come in before we start going and giving the basic details on the case. So hello to everyone in chat. We have, like I said, about 40 people, so I can't name everyone, but Cher, Truth and Justice, Annie, uh, let me see, Melissa, Marissa, I think Ronnie's in here, Chris, hello to everyone, Sky, thank you to everyone for joining us tonight. Now, many of you, oh, Finding Alicia Navarro, um, that was a case we did previously, hello to the person named Finding Alicia Navarro, please let me know if um, there are any updates on that case, uh, we'll, we'll cover that after, of course, but um Anyone, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. We try to get to everyone we can, but of course, it's not always easy. As the show grows, more and more people start coming and asking questions, so it's hard to get to all of them. Uh, yeah, Kaleidoscope asks, what happens to my backdrop? So we did try a different one today. Let me know if you guys like this. Uh, I don't know. It's a little more soft, and uh, I could see some people might like it. Some might think it's not quite as exciting or fun as the colored one, so let me know what you guys think. If you don't like it, we can always change it back. Or if you do like it, we can go with this. I just figured I'd try something a little new. Um, but, you know, let me know what you guys think. So, again, tonight's uh, the, tonight's case is on Crystal – I'm sorry, on uh, Diana Gonzalez, whose sister, Crystal Gonzalez, we had previously interviewed. Uh, tonight we have her Aunt Jenny, who's going to give, I guess you'd say, her side of the story and trying to kind of update because I think – Crystal was maybe my like sixth or seventh interview, and now we're in the 80s. So it's been quite a while since we um, since we interviewed her. So okay, this one says a lot of people. A lot of people are saying this one's they like this one better. It's more professional. All right, cool. If you guys like this one better, we can stick with it. We can rotate them out if we get a few good ones. Uh, so yeah, let me know what you think. Well, maybe we'll take a vote what you guys think, and uh, we'll keep that one, and we'll go from there. You like it, Mary? Okay, everyone seems to like it. <laughs> Uh, not about the backdrop. Nope, not at all. But, uh, you know, it's always nice to have something cool to look at on screen and something different. But I, I actually was having a little bit of trouble, guys. Looking, for, I was looking for an article that lined up because I didn't want to jump too far ahead because a lot, even though I've done the, uh, part one of this case already, a lot of you guys probably aren't familiar with it. So I was trying to find something that from back then. So I found something in September. I'll read just kind of a basic of... Uh, some of the some of the basics of the case. I'll read a quick article and then we will bring on Aunt Jenny. I try not to read too much in the beginning because, of course, it's much better coming from them than coming from me. They can tell the story a lot better than I can. So a massive search for 31-year-old Diana Rose Alejandre Garcia Gonzalez. Uh, we call it Diana Gonzalez, but that's the full name. Diana Rose Alejandre 
Garcia Gonzalez, I hope I'm saying that right, I apologize if not, is planned for October, this is last October, five months after the month, uh, after the mother of five disappeared from her Winter Haven, California home without a trace. After months without any answers on where Diana might be, her family hopes this new search in Winter Haven on October 17th will finally bring their loved one home. She's out there somewhere, Diana's aunt Jenny Espino told Dateline. We just need to bring her home. Jenny, who lives in Fort Smith, Arkansas, said that her niece was last in contact with family on April 2020. In June, she said Diana's mother called several family members asking if anyone had spoken to Diana. No one had. On June 30th, Jenny filed the missing persons report with the Imperial County Sheriff's Office in California. Investigator Jay Hurtado with the Sheriff's Office confirmed to Dateline that the Sheriff's Office is actively searching for Diana and that it is an ongoing missing persons case. He said Diana was last known to be in Winter Haven at the home she shares with her girlfriend, Danielle Meaden, and believes she disappeared on May 4th. So there will be a talk about Danielle Meaden. Uh, she was a big part of this case, I know from the previous interview. Just to be clear, we don't make any hard accusations on this show. So if a name is brought up by myself, a co-host, or our guests, uh, everything is alleged. We don't know until the case is actually solved. So again, no hard accusations. Everything's alleged. According to a press release issued by the Sheriff's Office in July, Diana had left her purse, cell phone, and personal belongings behind. Investigator Hurtado would not comment further on those details due to the ongoing nature of the investigation. We'll stop there. There's a little bit more, but I really want the information to come from Jenny. Uh, as I said, Danielle is going to be a big piece of this case. There's a lot to it. So uh, since I know Jenny has some updates, I don't know how much of the past stuff she's going to go over, but there's everything from her girlfriend, Danielle, to rumors of things Danielle had told people, to a fire happening that some say is related, some say is not. There's a lot, there's a lot to it. So again, I, I, I'm going to leave it up to Jenny as to how she wants to approach it. So let me bring on uh, uh, Jenny. Jenny, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I just want to say I'm so sorry for what you're going through. Um, I, I couldn't even imagine. I know Crystal, we got so much, such a response from Crystal and the emotion that she showed in the interview. I know how tough it was for her. So I just want to say thank you for your strength and bravery coming with us today and, you know, continuing the story, helping keep Diana's name out there. Um, so did, did you, did you want to get started? Maybe tell us a little bit about Diana and then you can kind of take us into the timeline of events. Um, my niece, Diana, she was living in Winter Haven, California with Daniela Meaden and we got a call, so I called Imperial County and I reported her as a missing person. I got in touch with this one officer. He called me and he said there was nothing, no one at the home when he went there. So I gave him Danny's cell phone number and he contacted her and he asked, can he meet up with her to search? He met up with her. They didn't find nothing. They went back again and they discovered my niece's cell phone and other belongings that belong to my niece, Diana, who's missing. Okay. And now we're just waiting to see if we could get any any answers from the investigator on the case, which I myself feel he's not doing his job because as we speak right now, Danny Meaden is in the county jail for the same thing that she did. But the girl got to get away. Right. And she's booked she's booked right now on a high bond. I mean, and is she still in jail from way back when I had interviewed Crystal? Is this the same charge? She's been uh, in there this whole time? No, they just arrested her probably a couple days ago. But she, no, about a week ago, I got a phone call and um, I called Imperial to confirm and see if Danny was in jail for. Danny's in jail for um, attempted murder. murder, having bullets on her cool. and a few other stuff. Stuff similar to what she was arrested for in August of 2019, what she done to my niece, Diana. Okay. And who who was it that she allegedly was uh, attempting to murder with this recent charge? Um, they're not. The, the investigator's not telling us, but it's on another female. Okay. And... 
so they're not telling you, but as far as you know, is it possible it was it someone she was in a relationship with, similar to how she was with Diana, or I believe so. Okay. So and and again, not to keep repeating myself, but everything we talk about here, guys, it's all alleged. We're not accusing anyone, but my understanding is even even aside from these two arrests, that um there's quite a history of violence with this person. Um as far as we know, right? Yeah, Danny has um, several charges from in the past, but the last one in August of 2019, we were told she threatened my niece. That's why my niece never went to court, and the case was um, dismissed. But the new charges, we're hoping, you know, that she will speak up and tell us where's my niece because we do need to bring Diana home. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And there were rumors, from what I remember, that Danny was telling people she stabbed Diana, and Diana just wandered off, right? Yeah. And then she tried to say that Diana was out here with us, but if my niece was here, um, there wouldn't have been no reason for me to re do a missing person on my niece. And then she said that Diana's with her husband, which Diana's husband is in prison in Arizona. And then she says Diana's been to Mexico is in Mexico. Diana hasn't been to Mexico in years, and she stopped going to Mexico years ago. Okay. Um, so uh, Chris asked, can we go over Diana's relationship with this woman? So my understanding was that, that this, was, this was essentially her girlfriend, her mate, right? Yes, it was her girlfriend. Okay. And so, and she has children as well because she had previously been uh, married, Diana, right? Diana has five children, two sons and three daughters. The boys are with their father and my nieces are in custody. Okay. Yeah. Is that new? I, I didn't remember the nieces being in custody previously. No, that's not new. That's something that it, it's been going on. They've been in um, custody for a while. And they, they did, Lisa Corinne asked if they lived together. At the time, Diana was living with uh, Danny, right? Um, yeah, the kids weren't living with Diana and Danny. They're where they're at right now. Yeah, the kids weren't right, but Diana and Danny were living together in the trailer, right? Yeah, they lived in a trailer there in Winter Haven, California. And it was, it was uh, if I, I, I had actually spoken to the owner of the trailer. I know some things, I think we had gotten them wrong in the first interview, so... Uh, if she's watching, I apologize if I'm not getting everything exactly correct. But was the trailer in back of her home? The trailer was in the back of the home no. of the woman who had her kids or one of her properties or something like that? No. Um, Diana's kids are in Yuma, Arizona, and Diana's was in Winter Haven, California. It's less than less than five, five minutes. It's, it's like a you just go over the bridge and you're in Yuma. You go back the other way and you're in Winter Haven. It's that close. Okay. And um, if I remember, so Crystal and I think a couple of friends or family members, when this happens, Diana goes missing. They got together and they went to go search somewhere. And it was either Danny or a friend of hers wouldn't let them search a certain area behind the trailer or something. And it would have been the yeah. area where Diana would have went if she had gotten stabbed, right? Is that? Yeah. So what, what uh, with the search? I was there for the search. I, I left from Arkansas to go do the search for October. Um, it was Ed Dupey. He didn't want to let us. The The reservation police ended up getting there. And after um, Ed Dupey let us search. Okay. And, and nothing turned up, I'm assuming? Nothing turned up, but my niece is out there somewhere and we just need to find her. And if anybody knows anything, they should find it in their heart and call the police. Because, you know, this feeling we have, it's not a good feeling. Right. I, I can I can only imagine. I, like I say, I, I interview people every almost every day. But um, I, I couldn't imagine being in you guys' shoes. I, I actually absolutely couldn't. Um, so I'm so sorry. Um, so what, what are you guys thinking between, you know, all the rumors, between what she apparent allegedly said? Uh, what are you guys thinking happened? There's a lot of rumors that are going out there, but you can't believe a lot of the rumors. But deep down in our heart, which is the family, we believe Danny Meaden done something with my niece. And 
we're not understanding how the investigator that's on the case, ¿cómo se llama? Hurtado, he's not, he's not doing his job right because he's had Danny's cell phone, he's had Diana's cell phone, and he claims he can't get in him to check, you know, what what's been erased on him. And I'm not understanding, you know, he wouldn't like it if it was his niece and, you know, we're holding info. But I know it's an investigation going on, but I do feel deep down in my heart, Danny's responsible. Danny and the other names that Danny gave. And are the names she gave, are they public? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now uh, something had happened about a week or two before uh, Diana, I, I keep messing up Danny and Diana, sorry. Diana had called and Danny apparently was holding her there allegedly and like wouldn't let her leave and beating her up or something. Like there's a history of yeah. violence here, right? Yeah, there, there's a lot of DV in the case in with the situation that Diana was in with Danny. Danny used to beat her, tie her to the bed, would board up the walls and not feed her and just keep on beating her and just leaving her tight. Mm. And and there was some, if if I recall, there was in the relationship some drug usage, correct? And that was heightening things. Yeah, um, they both, you know, my niece are just like me. I'm not innocent. I've been in that. I've been in Diana's shoes. I've I've done drugs. Diana had a drug problem. Danny had a drug problem, and then the abuse. Mm. And that only, of course, if there's any thing going on you know, the usage of drugs just only heightens it of course makes it even worse so yeah i can only imagine yeah um, but there's a, there's a lot of rumors out there and the only thing i say because diana's mother is my older sister donna is very sick and we need to do that much and, and find diana for my sister she's she's, she's very sick right now yeah donna's sick Oh yeah, and there's there's so um I had spoken to uh she has at least a few of Diana's kids and uh she she she's also someone that knows Danny. Well, do you want to go with, what's her name? The one the one who had the the um the house where some of the kids are staying with and she knows Danny. Oh, I never met that lady and I don't know her name, but I know my niece's Diana's kids has been in foster home for a couple years. Right. Yeah, but um her Diana's sons are the dad has custody of the boys there in Yuma, but I never had a chance to meet the person that had my nieces. I, I apologize. I think she has Danny's kids is the woman. I'm, oh, I'm you're talking of. about, you're talking about Kelly. Yes. Yes. I, I used to talk to Kelly, you know, um, I got some info, which I, I turned over all the information I had to the, to the one on the case, the detective on the case, but, we're not getting no response, and I'm not understanding. The FBI should have already been on this case, and he has not once contacted the FBI in San Diego. Mm. I have, and Crystal has, but they're saying that it got to be him to um, contact them, and he hasn't. So in, in, my, in my heart, I feel he's connected to Danny because Imperial County always lets da Danny just off all her charges. Mm. And then being on parole out of California, she should have never got released on an attempted murder. And all that happened in August of 2019. Right. And you're pretty, you're pretty sure you're leaning towards that Danny and, and this group of people that she mentioned are, are in some, some way responsible for Diana. Do you think there's any chance at all that Diana left for some reason and is just staying Diana, away? If she's seen all this stuff that's all over the news and the Facebook and all that, Diana wouldn't hide from us. She would go to her mom or she would contact Crystal. But she would not do this just up and leave her kids where they're at right now. No, Diana would never do that. Diana was Diana is a good mother. It's just she got involved with the wrong person. Right. You know, Diana was a working mother. She raised pretty much her older three daughters by herself. I lived out there with Diana. Diana was a good mother. Okay. 
So what's I, I know you had messaged me today saying that you know you wanted to come on and um, you know obviously just keeping the story out there is, is enough. But there is there new developments that you wanted to make sure got out there. Yeah, that um, I just want to get it out there that you know we need all the help we can get and we do need the FBI on this case because we refuse to just give up on my niece. You know. She she's somebody that needs to be found, just like every other missing person. Right. And there's more to what we're finding out, but we can't put it all out there. But I know as we speak right now, Danny's bond is so high that she won't get out. Mm. And it's for the same thing. Yeah, and I, I you know, I don't want to judge anyone off the previous history, but it does it does seem like with this person, there seems to be a continuous, continuous happenings of a very similar nature of violence and, you know, with people they're in relationships with, um, you know, she has, she has bullets, knives, all kinds of st stuff. Um, yeah, they got her, with, they, they got her with bullets, but if you look at the, what her arrest, what she's arrested right now for, that's what she was arrested on the in 2019 on my niece. So I do believe it must be someone she's in a relationship with. But I feel deep down in my heart, you know, Danny needs to just confess and give us my niece. Right. So you you think she she did something to her and you just want to know where where she is at this point, right? Yeah, we want to find Diana, but I don't understand who would want to hurt somebody like Diana or really anybody, you don't take somebody from their family and think you're just going to get away with it because, yeah, you know, it's going to come out eventually. People are going to start talking. And I, I just feel, you know, in my heart, Danny, Danny has no right to do what she done, you know? Mm -hmm. Diana is a loving, kind person, and Diana would do anything for anybody if she could do it. She's going to figure out a way how she's going to help somebody. But to hurt her and this to go on, no, it's just not right. I just I don't understand why the police, as far as I'm aware, they can get into those records. So they're telling you they can't get into the phone records at all? Well, the investigator that's on the case, truthfully, me and him's had words, you know, because he tells us when we're out there for the search, he told me himself on the phone that he was going to be local within, you know, the area we're going to be in and the reservation police call, try to contact him. And then they come back and they tell us that they called him on his cell phone and he never once answered. So I feel, what is he hiding? You know, cause we're, we're coming back. Hmm. It, it, the reservation police, they said they're okay with it. And we're going to go back until we find Diana. We got to find Diana. Yeah. I wonder if that plays a part in this being, uh, difficult. Whenever it's reservation land, I think there's all kinds of different laws and no, know. they're 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 okay with the searching the reservation police. It's pretty much their property, but they're on standby. So when we were there in October, they're every everywhere we went, you turn around and you see them, you know. Mm -hmm. But we had at first had problems with Ed Doopy. And then after, you know, I, I acted a fool, but he he ended up working with us and letting us search, you know. I did go in a trailer that they said my niece was living in. I didn't find nothing of Diana's. And but, I find it odd that Diana left like everything she owned, like purse and uh, cell phones. And she didn't take any credit or debit cards with her either, right? Because Marissa asked if she had any credit or debit cards we could try to trace to see her last movements. Jenny, I think you froze. Jenny, Jenny, if you can hear me, you're frozen. Let's give it a minute. Um, but Marissa, yeah, from from what I understand, she took absolutely nothing with her. Uh, hey, what's up, Nick? Thanks, man, for not missing. Um, Jenny, if you if you don't come back within like thirty seconds, try to exit and then come back in. We could try it that way. Amber says sometimes you get an active fool to get people to take you seriously. That's true, so, uh, to get them to really give you some attention. What did Ali say? When law enforcement initially checked Danny's place, did they find any more of the, 
Um, yeah, I think I think pretty much everything of hers was there, Allie. Uh, let's see. I'll ask your question when when she comes back, because your question is kind of yours and Marissa's kind of go together. So I'll, I'll combine them for both Marissa and Allie. Let's give it a moment and see if we can get her back in. This case is sad. I remember, you know, when when we did when we do that piece at the end where we ask the guest to um, to speak directly to their missing per missing loved one. This was probably the first one I did that was people would tell messaging me saying that they were like breaking down in tears because it was really, really sad. She was breaking down, looking, you know, trying to speak to her sister. This was, they're all sad of course, but this one really, really uh, touched people and, and helped them break down. Marissa says, just wondering, cause the article I read said they weren't sure when exactly she went missing. Uh, his Jenny. One second. Hi, Jenny. We lost you. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, so, yes, people are asking about uh, her, her credit and debit cards. Can we trace those? So then, uh, But then someone else asked uh, about, uh, on top of the credit and debit cards, was anything else found besides her phone and purse, like clothes, toiletries, et cetera? Was all her stuff there? What I remember, it wasn't there at first, but then it did appear, some of the stuff. Like, there was a really weird um, story behind it. Um, they, they're telling us that it was a cell phone and some belongings that belong to Diana. And not once have they mentioned a purse to us, but um, I have reported to Huerto that um, Hurtado, that um, Danny cashed my niece's stimulus check. Danny has my niece's ID and Diana's been, Danny's been using Diana's um, EBT card mm. because um, we have the, the, the stuff that the lady sent us from the store. And um, he was supposed to go pick up the videos from the store and never once went. And the store is just right there in the same city he's in, right there in Winter Heaven. She still, you uh, when she was out of jail recently, she was using her EBT and all that Diana's, stuff? Diana's EBT card, yes. So that's, I would think that wouldn't even be active um, or still getting loaded. Oh, well, I guess no, because she's not confirmed gone or anything. So they're still loading it. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, but um, they sent us the pictures that Danny was getting in this car and all the stuff she bought from the store. And the name of the card that was on the card Danny was using, she sent all that information to me and I sent it to the investigator. And not once. He, he to me he's just a habitual liar because everything we tell him or the stuff we send him he he don't follow through none of it mm -hmm. wow so so that's why is, is there any I charges i'm sorry no he says that there that's the least of their worries about her ebt card and her stimulus check you know but he still ain't doing his job because danny should have been in custody danny should have never been able to hurt another another female that's for sure and they let her out and now somebody else is hurt but luckily the person got away and the cops got her in custody wow. but she's given a few names that she tries to say like jason doopy lewis roseville and two other guys are are the last ones that had diana and We've, I've talked to other people, and they said the person that was last seen with Diana was Danny. And the last was, person she was living with was Danny. And that was May 4th was the last time Danny said she saw Diana? Yeah. I believe it was May 4th. And there's no confirmed sightings of her after that May 4th, right? Because that's the day given in the reports. No. So, but that, but Danny says, oh, she was last with this Jason Dupin and these other people. What does she say she was doing with them? Or what's the story there? She doesn't give no story. And it's like, if you don't believe that, what she's saying, then she tries to say she's here in Arkansas with us or she's with her husband. And I told Danny, I said, um, Danny, you're a habitual liar because Diana's husband's in prison. Diana is legally married to Richard, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, but um, it's, it sounds like this girl's being allowed to just say anything and no one's even looking into it or. No, I feel the the investigator, he's not doing his job. They should give it to somebody that's going to do the job, because every time I call when I first reported Diana, he's gone. He's on vacation. It's every it's always something with this investigator. And I'm not understanding if you can't do your case involve the FBI because the FBI ain't too far from winter heaven. You know, and when I yeah. was out there on the search, 
search. When I was out there on the search, I was talking with the reservation police and I told him, well, Danny was arrested for attempted murder back in 2019 on my niece. And then I ended up able to talk to the officer that arrested her. And he told me I was the officer that arrested Danny and Danny shouldn't have never got out. So he doesn't understand. It's always that investigator that's on the case is always just letting Danny go. Yeah. He's letting, he's letting her go. It, he's letting, it seems like um, she's being allowed to just say things that obviously seem to be lies and they never really looked mm -hmm. into and just move on from there. I, I don't get why she's, seemingly just being allowed to do and say anything she wants and nothing's coming of it. And then she gets out and then goes after someone else. Yeah. That other person should have never got hurt if he was doing his job properly. Wow. You know, cause everything falls back on Danny. And is there any besides Danny, just, just to make sure we round everything out. Is there anyone besides Danny that could have, because I, from what I remember, I, I talked to a lot of people in this case, and there are some people that don't feel Danny was really responsible, right? Is there, is there another explanation, another person that could have done something that, um, that uh, Diana had problems with? Oh, I think we're losing Jenny again, guys. Uh, what did you say? You don't understand either. I don't understand why. Yeah, yeah, Allie, uh, I... <clears throat> I definitely don't understand why there weren't charges of fraud, but from what Jenny said, they basically just said um, that's the least of our worries right now. So basically it sounds like they're saying, Hey, we're trying to figure out if there's a murder here. We'll, we'll worry about the fraud later. So yeah, Rose, maybe, she could be an informant that, that, that I guess would be a, uh, a good explanation. <clears throat> yeah. I know. And she, Danny is, has spoken to detectives. And uh, the victim is not. I'm just reading through you guys' comments. Give me just a second here. Yeah, we don't know who that other victim is, but there, there's a long history here. Um, I'm trying to, to make sure I don't mix details. You got hi, Sharon. I'm trying to make sure I don't I don't mix details because I deal with so many cases. But if I'm recalling, Dan, there's something to do with Danny and someone else. Um, had driven up, I think it was Victorville, which is a city I used to live in years ago, um, had actually driven up and they got in trouble for beating up like an older woman or something at her front door. Yeah. Hi, Jenny. Um, hi. Um, Danny originally was arrested as a minor for beating a 90 year old person. That was the story I'm talking about, right? They drove to Victorville at, at her front door. And what was the yeah. story today? Was something, did it involve a car or something? I'm going all off memory here. No, they try to rob this lady, but. It was three of them, and Danny, for the age that she was, since she was a minor, she only got a few years. And then um, it's been mentioned that she had part to do with the death of her own mother by giving her mom a hot shot. Her mom was an addict, and um, her mom used IV drugs. And then Danny, out of nowhere, gave her mom a hot shot. So. Imperial County left it as a overdose. What, what is it? Okay, that's like when you give someone something that kills them drugs. Yeah, so Imperial County left it as an overdose and never followed through. But if they would have done a right autopsy and fingerprint the body, they would have found Danny's fingerprints on her mother. On her own mother. On her own mother. If you could kill your own mother, you're, you're target to kill the next person. But I just want to make sure that's there's that's not confirmed or anything. So we, we got to okay. be careful about what we. What no. Um, well, um, reservation police agreed to what I just said. OK. But it's been so long they can't refile, you know. Right. And I'm not understanding that, but. <sighs> well, for something like that, that murder, there would be no statute of limitations, right? No, but what we want is Diana found. So regardless, however, we're going to get Diana. We just need her back. And then whoever hurt Diana needs to go in front of the law and see what all they're going to do. Because this ain't just a regular murder if my niece is gone, because it's been almost nine months. Diana's been missing. 
So the story about her, I think, I think, I think it was like that. Danny was claiming Diana took something from her. I don't know, whatever it was, and then stabbed her. Is that the story that you believe, or, or what are we thinking? The reason I'm asking, I'm trying to lead to where can people look if they want to help. But what areas should we be focusing on? And you know, Over what's there, the scenario? In, in Winter Heaven, by where my niece was living with Danny, by the trailers. But there's an also another trailer somewhere, and the investigator won't tell us where the other one is. But we will be back out there next month. Okay. So if anybody does want to help out in any way, whether it be in person or online, um, if you go into the description, I have a link for Jenny. If uh, you can, you know, contact her. She's she's all uh, her. Your profile's under Amador or something like that. But I can tell you, Jenny, she's always on Facebook talking about this case. So if you need to reach her, you yeah. can get her. <laughs> she, yeah. She puts in. It, it, it don't matter what time. If anybody gets any leads to my niece, they could just message it, and I'll get in touch with um, one that's out there that could look into it. But, yeah, pretty much my whole Facebook is about my niece. Yeah. Do you have two Facebooks, or did you just change the name? Because no, it was well they, they lock, Facebook locked me out, so I had to make a new one. Okay, okay. Yeah, because some stuff that I have said about Danny, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, you got to be careful. That's why I say that in this chat. E even if you believe you know something 100%, whenever you're going public with it, you got to just be careful because just protect yourself, you know? Well, to tell you, to be honest with you, 100% of my life, I could put Danny harmed my niece. And I, I feel deep down in my heart, my niece is not here no more. And me and Diana, we were really close, you know? And I just don't feel it. My niece is here, but... Danny and all the others will pay for what they've done because it's not over. Well, if it was Danny, wh whoever this was, um, they're they're gonna pay because you guys aren't gonna get away with whatever happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and it sounds like <clears throat> Diane is not the type, unfortunately, to I like you know not that it would be an ideal situation, but I I, I would hope that maybe she just needed some time away. And but uh, Diana but, would never do this to the family, right? Exactly, Not that's this. what I mean. So no. it sounds like there's no way that that's possible. And knowing her mom is sick, Diana wouldn't do, put her mom through this. Right. Well, oh, her mom was sick even when she left? Huh? Even when, she, even, even when she disappeared, her mom was sick back then, so she would know? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Diana would know. But I, we just refuse to give up. You know, we're, we're not going, like, you know, it was told to me by other people that live there on the reservation. That it's just going to go to, you know, pretty much throw it to the back burner, my niece's case. But I refuse to just give up on my niece because Diana wouldn't do that to us. Right. She'd be there for you, so you have to be there for her. Yeah. So if anyone needs to reach you <clears throat> to help out, um, I have your Facebook link in the description of this mm -hmm. video. Just hit show more and you guys will see it. You'll see all the relevant links and information. Uh, mm -hmm. If you need to... Contact the Winter Haven, California, Imperial County Sheriff's Department. Their number is 445-275-2105. And it's case number 2006-1643. Um, so those that's who you always want to contact is either the family or authorities. You can also contact me, guys. My information is in there, but it doesn't make sense to just contact me. Make sure you contact the family and the authorities. Um, that's the important thing, especially if it's something that's time sensitive. You don't want to send it to me and then we don't get it to them in time. So make sure you do um, uh, contact them directly. Um, trying to go through the chat. Angie Marie asks, how long is Danny supposed to be in jail for what's happened? Um, how long? I, I'm hoping she don't get out no more. Be I'm hoping with the new case that she got. And I'm hoping Danny will break and tell him where, where's my niece, you know, because if they already got her, what else can she lose? And her own family's even said, you know, they're tired of Danny, which is her family that are in Phoenix. And she's burning their name out there on the reservation, you know. And I've spoke with and Danny has three biological children. I spoke with um the oldest son's dad and he told me that Danny confessed to him that Diana was never coming back and she was gone 
Yeah, that was one of the rumors that she had said that that she wasn't coming back. And he 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 said he left state, but he told he told me he said he talked to the investigator and he told the investigator if he could guarantee him that Danny would never get out, he'll come back to testify of everything she told him. Wait, say that one more time. Word that say that one more time. Danny's oldest son's dad told the investigators and told me that he would come back. Because he left state because he says he's just tired of dealing with Danny. Right. Um, he said he would come back to the, to California to testify against Danny of everything she told him if they could guarantee that she wouldn't get out. Oh, they have to guarantee that she doesn't. So he's scared of her. He just doesn't want to. Yeah, because he got the son. Him. He got the son from her. And like he says, his son's in danger, you know. So he did leave the state. He has full custody of his son. And he gave me his cell phone number to keep. In case I ever needed it. Yeah, I, Marissa, I agree with her. She says uh, that says a lot if a man's afraid of this woman. I, I um, wouldn't be. Jenny doesn't look like nobody to be scared of. She she likes. It, it seems like she likes to intimidate people that have no backbone. Yeah. But every I mean, a ninety year old woman, Jesus. Yeah, a ninety year old woman. What can a ninety year old woman do to defend herself? You know, they're trying to rob her, but what can she do? You know, she was hopeless. But eventually one day Danny's going to meet her match. And, and it might you, be it might be in prison. Yeah, that, that's probably likely where it will be if she stays there for much longer. Yeah, because um, I've been there and a lot of my family done a lot of time in the girls' prisons and all the prisons that are in California. So she can't hide too much. But what she thinks she put us through, she ain't going to just get away with it. Everything comes out in the long run because somebody's going to talk and people are already talking now that she's in jail. And do you think the trailer is where so if, if something happened, do you think it was at the trailer? Where, where, where are you thinking? The, the trailer I went in, I looked around it and I didn't see nothing that would look like blood. But, you know, it's been months. Right. But I was thinking about getting the stuff that the police used to put it in that trailer to see, you know, the lights that see. makes it glow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, nos dejó. Yeah. But um, yeah, one of them is Danny Dupi's son, Jason Dupi, and all of a sudden he left a couple states away to get a job. But I doubt that. But everybody will get caught that harmed my niece. Yeah, there's only so much you can hide from some something like that. So if you, if it, it, oh, AJ Marie asked, was Lumen all used? So that's what you were talking about. Do you know if the police used that at all when they searched? No, um, they didn't use that because if they would have used it, we were told that they would have found a lot of my niece's blood in that trailer. And um, they didn't even do a pr proper search because the dogs that they took out, the canine dogs, they're drug dogs, not human remain dogs. Okay. Um, Jenny, is there anything that, um, I didn't think to cover? Chris has a message for you there in Spanish. I don't know how to read Spanish. <laughs> I should see that's good. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Oh, Chrissy says, si bien sabes, Jenny. Yeah. I don't know what that bien means good, right? Yeah, being means good. Um, is there anything I didn't think to cover that you uh, do want to make sure, you know, is, is out there? Anything important, any details, whether it be specifically about Diana or Danny or anything like that? Or, or uh, on top of that, would you like to get a message? I always do something at the end, like we did with Crystal, you probably remember, where we did this. We had to speak directly to someone who may have information or Diana. Uh, the floor is yours. If you'd like to speak directly to Diana or given the situation, I know you don't believe she's out there. If you'd like to speak directly to, um, you know, anyone who may have some details, whatever you'd like to do. Um, I just feel like this is a very important part of the interview. And if you don't, if it's too much, you don't have to. Um, or if you need to take a moment to step off camera, that's fine. Can I, can I? Can I come back in a minute, a couple of minutes? Yeah, 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 yeah. Take your time. It's not something you have to do. It's just, you know. No, I want to well, do it. Okay. Okay, just a minute. Yeah, just put the phone down and go. Yeah. Oh. Jeez. 
um, yeah, that Chris though was the same way. She really wanted to do it because I usually talk to them beforehand about it, and they want to do it, but it's tough when it comes time to. Uh, Nick, I think a hot shot is either like so much of a drug that it kills someone, or like mixed with some kind of poison that it kills them. But it's something that is intended to kill the person. Um, so, but uh, poor Jenny. I agree, Kobe. Hello. Yes. No, I just want um, to put out there, if anybody knows anything about my niece, please, I'm asking you, please, just call the police. We need to find my niece. And um, Nana, if you're out there, please just try to reach out to us. We will go for you. We're not going to stop until we find her. Absolutely. I can tell I, you about I refuse. And if Danny gets arrested for it, trust Jason, I'll be at every court date. I don't care how many states away I am, I will be there. Because I want answers. Why did she harm my niece? Because Diana wouldn't hurt nobody. Right. And yeah, for anyone who's just joining, at the very least, we understand there is a history of violence, not just with her in general, but between her and Diana. So there, um, it's not like it's just being pulled out. Of, again, we don't like to make any accusations, but it's not like it's being pulled out of thin air, right? It's uh, there's a history, and I think the uh, oh, look at the <laughs> is it your husband? Oh, that's sweet. Um. Sorry, uh, um, I lost my train of thought there. Um, Chris says, you are doing the most, Jenny. You're doing everything you can. Um, and uh, I was going to say, yeah, of anyone, families I've dealt with, you guys have been like every day on there. You you particularly. So I know you're not going to give up and you will get answers. And, and, it, and law it, enforcement needs to get on this. Like Jason, it's hard. It's hard because I feel, you know, I shouldn't be opening my eyes. I shouldn't be putting nothing in my stomach. My niece is out there, you know, and, and it's not right. Danny did something to her along with the other people. And this feeling, to be honest, I just wish it, it was me because I can't do this. It, it, it's too hard. And then my sister being sick and Donna's losing it more. <laughs> you know, we live a couple of states away. But if I have to, I would jump in my car and go. But just seeing Donna, you know, I lost I, I lost a daughter when she was three months. Diana's 31. You know, Diana's been in the family a lot longer. But right. just the way things are going to end up, it's the worst one to our family. And you would have never thought stuff like this would happen in my family because who my family are. But it happened. Right. And everything I can read about Diana, you know, good good girl, you you wouldn't expect you know anything bad to happen to her. It's it's a shame, and I'm so sorry. You, but you're 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 a great representative for her, Jenny. You're doing everything you can. I've and I, I a lot of times when you guys see me interview someone, I just met them a week ago or something. I've I've known Jenny or known of her for months and months. So I've seen her posting all over, you know, all over Facebook. So she's she's all over it getting. Uh, and, and I'm thank yeah, I thank God we have a, a Jennifer and Sean and Megan that are that help us, you know, and they don't know us. And I tell them I'll forever be grateful for everything they do for my niece and us, you know. But mm -hmm. if it wasn't for them, to tell you the truth, I'd be more lost than what I am now. Yeah. yeah. But it's they, one they of those things strong. I can't even. I can't even. I don't yeah, know. just the feeling of like, you know, even be able to open the door and, you know, why can't my niece just come through the door? Yeah, just the law over there with Imperial County, they got so many missing cases and just everybody goes to the back burner. And that's not right because you know what? Somebody has to pay for all this. You know, they're not doing their job. If you don't want to do your job, that's somebody that wants to do it, do it, you know, involve the FBI on pretty much Imperial County. Got so many cases, missing cases, involve the FBI. If you guys can't do your job, 
I don't know what it's taking the investigator. He don't want to call nobody. Right. Because he's not doing his job, so let somebody else do his job. It seems like they pick and choose which cases they want to give attention to, and that's not right. Like you say, if you can't do it, give it to someone who can. Uh, Kiss Me Under the Moonlight says, just looked up the charges of Danielle. She's got attempted murder, false imprisonment, and many more. Why doesn't the detective go talk to her? Uh, well, they do have her in custody, um, Moonlight. But, um, yeah, th there is quite a history there. That's why I say she's not picking it. Like, we don't, we try not to make accusations on this show, but at the same time, uh, she's not picking it out of nowhere. There, There is a history there. So, But see, that other person, Jason, would have never got hurt if they right. would have kept her in there for my niece being missing. You know, you're, you're on parole. When I was on parole out of California, anything, I'm not going to just get out. You know, now somebody else got hurt thanks to the investigator on the case because he's on the case again. Thanks to him, somebody else had to get hurt now. And luckily, whoever it was, pray to God, they got they got away on time, you know? Yeah, and hopefully they don't let her out again and something bad happened again or something. Uh -huh. You know? How long did you say she's supposed to be in for this? Do you know? Well, she's been in, I believe. I got the call about a week ago. Or ten, seven to ten days, but hopefully... I'm praying she don't get out and that she confesses to where she got my niece. Yeah, Annie uh, asked, did you say she has an attempted murder on the second victim? Yeah, that's what we're talking about now. Annie is um, the second victim who we don't know the name of. I'm not sure if Jenny does, but we, we don't have it um, publicly, at least. Is uh, She was caught with the bullets. And what else did she have? Bullets and... Bullets and... I can't even remember her. I, I have wrote it down so I can keep up with her. And she has a, attempted murder on yeah. the new person. Yeah, and people she are calling that charges. Yeah, people are calling that the second victim, but then this 90 year old lady. So if anything, this is the third victim, if not more. Yeah. Jason, I could barely hear you. Oh, is that did that just happen? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. Can, you still can't hear me? I could uh, hear you a little bit, but not like I did when you first got on. Oh, um, is that like that for everyone in the chat? Can you guys not hear me or? Um, I'm not sure. Is it, it could be the speakers or some kind of connection? I'm not sure, Jenny. You still can't hear me? I mean, it, it's about to be an hour, so we can kind of finish up there. Um, yeah. Are you still having trouble hearing me? No, I could hear you, but it's just not loud like it was. Oh, uh, I don't know. But I'm Jason, gonna... is there any way you could post on there before you hang up the thing that I sent you on the attempt to murder? Uh, post post it where? On the description? Yeah. Uh, I can't post anything in the description until we finish, but I can post it right afterwards. Uh, you, you're talking about yeah. what you sent me in the uh, in the messenger? Yeah, I sent it to you on Messenger. Uh, let me see. Oh, right here. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you, what you sent me, though, it's just a pic. You know, it's just a picture. Uh, let me see. I can show it on the screen I, I, if that's what you mean. I'm sorry. Is this what you mean right here? Yeah, I could bear. Uh huh? This right here? I can't see it. You can't see a woman arrested yeah, for that. attempted murder? Yeah, that's on my knees. It says a 30-year-old woman was arrested for attempted murder by sheriff's deputies uh, 10.30 p.m. Saturday at an undisclosed location on Foster Road. The county sheriff's office arrest record stated Danielle Meaden was also booked into jail for corporal injury on a spouse or cohabitant violating parole. And held on five hundred thousand dollars bail. The arrest record stated. Oh wait a minute! It's saying spouse or cohabitant. So cohabitant means she was living with the person, right? The what? Uh, it says cohabitant. Doesn't that mean she was living with the person? Yeah. So the second person, she was living with them. Huh? Uh, yeah, I think we have a con bad bad connection. I'm sorry. This this second person uh, victim, she was living with the second victim. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I, I can post that 
in a, I'm going to post the link to Diana's group, okay? Yeah. All right, why don't we finish up there? Because for whatever reason, we're having some problems with the connection. Uh, thank you so much to Boston Actress, um, who says, let me put it on screen here. Thank you so much, Boston. Prayers that you get the answers your family deserves. And uh, she says, uh, thank you for covering this station. I will be sure to share the link to this video on my feeds. Uh, yeah, she has and she has a lot of people that uh, are on her social media. So she'll help get the word out there too, Jenny, to thank everyone so that we can. All right. Well, thank you so much. We're going to end it there because we're having a little bit of a connection problem anyways. And we're at about an hour, which is about how long they go. So uh, I want to say thank you to you. And um, I'm not sure uh, your friend that's the, your husband. Or, yes, my husband. Your husband. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you. Thanks for joining us tonight and, you know, helping yeah. helping Jenny get through this. And uh, we're going to do everything we can to help spread the word out there. And we'll pray you guys get answers. Okay, Jason. Thank you so much. All right, thank you guys. Have a great night, Jenny. And thank you to everyone you in the chat. Have a great night. Bye-bye. All right, bye. And, uh, all right, guys, you know what? Let me let Jenny go there. I just wanted to say thank you. We had um, one person join as a member. I think uh, I don't have the name in front of me, so sorry. It was like slashing something. Uh, and then Boston Actress donated as a super chat. Thank you to you so much. And then uh, we also had uh, Tabitha do a $10 paypal donation the, the link is in the description paypal.me slash jason Eber one so thank you so so much to you guys for supporting the channel it, it allows me to do these more and more try to be doing this every you know almost every night if we can so if you would like to support the channel that's how the best way to do it is through the paypal link it's paypal.me slash jason hebert one and the link is in the description of the videos so thank you so so much to everyone who did and everyone who does moving forward and uh, we love you guys. Uh, thanks for joining us and have a great night. All right. Bye-bye.